Hi everyone, welcome to Eden Secret. I had so many requests to make this soap uh, from the soap cutter video that I did recently. Um, people, many, many people seem to love the soap. And would I show how I made it? Yes, of course I'll show how I made it. Um, so first off, we're going to start with some melt and pour soap. And if you've got any um, soap moulds that have hearts in, I mean, that's what I used. I actually made this um, soap mould myself. I know I keep promising that I'm going to do show you how to do these. There are probably hundreds of videos now on YouTube how to make silicon moulds. So if you can't wait till I show you, then just have a look and um, you'll see some other people that have made them. So we've got clear melt and pour and I'm just going to pop some gold. The, the soap that I did was had silver hearts um, and it was pink, purple, um, hot pink, purple, light pink and cream. Um, but obviously I've already made that and we've got that on the shelf. Uh, shelf. Um, so this one I'm going to do it with my yellow soap. This is going to be my yellow sliced soap. Um, so I'm going to do it with yellow. As you can see in the background I'm going to do blue, pink and yellow for this one. So yeah, just pop some gold mica into your jug there. Just give it a whisk in until all of the mica is coated or mixed in thoroughly with the melt and pour. And then just pour the melt and pour. I mean, any heart shaped mould will do. It doesn't have to be ornate like this one is. You've seen this mould many, many times before. I use it with my Sugar Queen soap um, and my Love Heart cupcakes. And then when we unmold them, I'm going to put loads of gold glitter on the other side, on the upside. Silicon moulds really are so easy to make. Just find a plastic container with a flat bottom. Whatever you want to make the shapes from. Just glue those with a glue gun, glue them to the bottom. Um, don't use too much glue because you don't want them protruding too high. And um, then just pour your silicon over the top and leave it to set. Now I made these, this one, with actual icing sugar decorations. So after I'd made it and tried to get the icing sugar decorations out, they just, most of them broke. Uh, when I was trying to pull them out with holes but once I give it a wash and got all of the icing sugar out of the mould and then we were just left with the perfect shape of that icing sugar decoration because at the time to buy uh, icing sugar decorations in this shape I might actually still have some um, poppies Red hearts, yeah, let's have a look. If there's any in here. There is. There is. So this was them. I just used those. So obviously, yeah, they broke up uh, 
when I try to unmold them but I just give them a wash out and a brush out with a, a brush and they worked I've done it with um, not lavender the violets I've done it with the violets before that didn't work as well as these did um, but I think the violets one was maybe the first one I did um, so maybe that's why it wasn't very good right now then so we're going to have two loaves so we've got plenty of hearts to put on these two loaves so I don't need to pour any more of those we'll just let those set and then we'll unmold them coming up right now is a picture of the soap um, that you all requested I make so you'll see the exact design that everybody's been talking about right okay so let's unmold these literally set up in about 15 20 minutes maybe even faster than that and that's what they look like see they've got this little flower indentation on here as well here's Johnny Johnny that's him out of Patrick Swayze out of Dirty Dancing in it yeah What's he called? It's in a Shining. The Here's Shining. Johnny. Is it? Oh, so you would be the scary one, not the sexy one. Is he called Johnny out of Dirty Dancing? God knows. I can't remember. I must have seen that film a million times and I can't even remember the lead's name. I know his real name, Patrick Swayze, but. You didn't look at me, I don't know. <laughs> blinking, blinking. Rubbish. Don't watch that rubbish. Right, so let's just lay these out on here. And we're going to cover them with loads of glitter. Because... I want them really glittery. This is exactly what I did with the last ones. Obviously, I did them in silver. That might be why they looked so nice. You know, I do, I do like to use gold a lot. Maybe these will look even better. I don't know, we'll see. This glitter here, um, the dark gold from Glitter Express, it really pops. When you cover your embeds in them and then put it on your soap, it pops like crazy. It doesn't make a real popping sound, it just pops. The colour pops. You know what I'm talking about. that for there. So now let's just move the camera along a little bit further. Yeah. 
Yeah, can you put it in the closet, please? Put it where? We haven't the got closet. a closet. We've got put a closet. closet. Where the dip was the closet at? The closet is the chin dressing room in between the bedroom and the shower room. It's called a closet. Is it? Is that the posh word for It chip? is a posh word posh for word closet. For Do you know I got pulled up yesterday for calling she butter. No, calling she butter she butter. <laughs> it's pronounced she apparently. Right. So because I'm not posh I get pulled up for not being posh. But that was just one person. Right. So I'm using the posh word today, yeah. closet. It might not be called a closet, it might be called something else for all I, I know. I know what it's called, it's called a tip room. Yeah, it's a tip it room. Never been there. It should have been my own suite. Never well, used. you can always go in another bedroom in the house and I'll have that room all to myself. You could have the shed outside. Oh, you it? can have the shed. That's where no. you like being, isn't it? No. Sorry for you. That's enough for you, John, for today. I do love him, really. You know that, Tony. It's just our way of having fun. So, um, what we're going to do is, for the flowers on the top, we're just going to pour some off. Uh, to one side so I'm just going to put I don't know probably a kilo no what is it 800 mils into that jug and we'll just pop that to one side it won't set up or anything in the time that we're going to spend doing this then we're going to split the mixture we've got left in the container into three. So you need three jugs. And it really is quite a simple design to do. I've been testing some new fragrances and I've got a couple of them on my arm and they smell absolutely delicious. So they'll be coming up um, obviously in some future videos. Now it doesn't have to be the exact amount the same in each they don't all have to be identical just just similar will do and then we're going to pop the colors in so obviously yellow is going to be our predominant color so that will be the first color we pour so we'll pop the yellow i wonder if uh, think because I want the yellow to be the predominant colour I think I'm gonna fill this jug ah, ah I've done something I've forgotten to do something it's a good job I remembered before I mean I could I guess yeah I could guess couldn't I surely I can guess been doing it long enough I forgot to put the fragrance in. I should have put the fragrance in into the pan with all the batter in it, but I can work it out. So if you're doing this, um, you know, this is suitable for beginner, advanced or very advanced soap maker. Uh, not that I need to teach any advanced soap makers how to make soap. So we're going to pop some yellow in there pop some pink into the middle one 
And this is a blue, but it actually comes out a gorgeous cornflower um, colour when it sets. So just put a level teaspoon of that one in. Right, where's my fragrance? And I'm going to use um, Winter Fireside. It's not like a winter fragrance at all. I guess it's just that you would put fires on in the winter. Maybe that's why it's called Winter Fireside. But it's a fantastic woody, gorgeous woody fragrance. Like burnt wood. Um, but it's very, very nice. Would make a gorgeous aftershave. So we'll put 50 mils in there. And the big one, 30 mils in the two smaller ones. I hope it doesn't seize, do you know, because I don't know if I've ever made soap with it. I usually just make bath bombs. <laughs> start with the yellow and I'm going to do yellow pink yellow blue yellow pink yellow blue if I make a mistake give us a shout I'm just going to pour it straight down the middle like so in both containers and we're going to repeat that until the containers are almost full. The pink just makes the yellow pop. The yellow makes the pink pop. Yellow and pink are a fantastic colour combination. What's actually quite magical is I can see some orange notes in there now. It's because the pink and the yellow make of course orange don't they this is exactly the same as what I did with the other soap only I use different colours Oops, I didn't put any in this side. I'm bound to make mistakes like that, of course. Because I don't concentrate properly sometimes. And when I'm talking, well, I think it's just because I'm getting old now. I literally do just forget things all the time. And we want to save some of these colours to make the flowers on the top. So don't fill them up too high. Well, that's what I said about the other bit of soap, isn't it? Yeah. So I've already put that to one side, so I can just use this.
it's just a very similar design to pour like a funnel pour where you would pour it directly into the centre every single pour goes here and nowhere else but you get the much better effect actually doing it this way Right, so they're exactly the right height, about a centimetre from the top of the liner. Just mopping all this soap up off the worktop with an old rag. And then we're going to split this soap into three, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Okay, so pop some fragrance into what you've got left over. I've used some of this for um, testing, testing out some fragrances. And just blend that in. It doesn't move fast at all. It's a slow mover actually. And it's from Saint Pafique. And then again, we're just going to split it into the three jugs. Now, when you're going to pipe something with three different colours, it is imperative that you put the fragrance in to the whole batch that is going to go in the piping bag. So that must be mixed in there. The fragrance must be mixed in there. And we'll just split it like this into three. And then add, oh, I'm just doing something. I'll be back in a t Okay, so let's put the colours into the bag. So we've got our three colours. Pink, yellow, and it's like a blue, but I think it'll, um, it'll be more like a, a lavender colour when it's in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spoon the yellow into the blue And then do the same with the pink. So they're all of a very similar consistency. So I think we've got maybe 700 grams of colour. 
so you can literally just scoop it out like that and it'll get every colour that you've got in your bowl in your jug do it again and it even is making some orange there as you can see just dribble it down to the bottom of the bag just get it all in there probably would be a little bit better if it was a little bit firm firmer than what it is but I need to go and do some ironing so I can't wait any longer yeah, if you look into the bag you'll see all the different colours mixed together And then what we're going to do is we're going to, hang on, can you see the, no you can't. <laughs> and we're just going to pipe flowers right down one side like this, which is exactly what I did with the other soap. And it just makes it look like a rose, doesn't it? That's the beauty with that 1M tip. It works perfectly for piping a rose in this way. And we can do some smaller ones as well. Maybe pipe right down this side because we've got quite a lot of mixture left. I wonder if it'd be better. Oh, we can get another flower in there though, can't we? Do it like this. But of course, we've got to get our hearts in there as well. And we want quite a lot of those in there. It's literally, I couldn't have measured it more perfectly, really. So that's that. And then we're going to pop these beautiful hearts in down this side. The predominant flowers are on this side and we want those to show. So we're just going to pop these in sporadically in different so they're facing different ways all the way down and they're at different angles as well they're not just laid on top flat so it does look quite different to the the pink and purple one but it still looks fab and again we just seem to have just the right amount of hearts to finish that all the way to the end and then we'll do the other one I'm not going to sprinkle any more glitter on because I want those um, the hearts to pop 
Now obviously the soap needs to saponify overnight so it is going to look a little different right now to what it looked tomorrow. So whether it looks better now, wet or better dry, we'll find out. I guess the only other thing we're not going to know is whether it will discolour. I don't think it will because it's a very light coloured fragrance. Right, let's have a close look. Now let me see from this side as well, because the I think the flowers might look more defined when you're looking from the opposite side. So now all we need to do is cut this. But of course we need to let it saponify first. So let's do that, shall we? Okay, so I've unmolded the soap and this is what it looks like. And then on the top you've got all of the hearts down here. I don't think it's quite as pretty as the pink and purple, but it's still very nice. So let's cut it, shall we? And I'm using the um, single wire cutter from MRK Tools. Um, I don't know if he's back up and running yet. I think it was either the beginning of May or the end of May. I don't know if it's a bereavement or something like that. I haven't spoke to him, it's just a notice that's on his um, page. So the link for the cutter will be in the description box below. So I've already cut one slice, so you can see how fabulous the design is. So let's cut the next one. Now I've tightened the wire up because it was pinging, and well it's still pinging. <laughs> And someone kindly told me that if I tighten the wire up, it, it'll stop doing that. So I might try and tighten it up a little bit more. Let's see if it makes a difference. I'm frightened that I'm going to snap it. It feels like that's as far as it'll go. It didn't ping that time, did it? So it's a lovely chunky bar. Um, and you get like those pretty roses on the top. with the, Which you get with the 1M, 1M piping tip. It's a lot easier way to do to, to a rose design than actually try to pipe a rose They're nice and chunky these because they're not quite so high on top um, as what I usually do. It's 
definitely working. It's not pinging anymore. It's pinging again now, so maybe it needs doing again. Look at that one. That's just a little sample off the end. It's really interesting that design and it's so easy to do. Right, let's get this one cut. Gosh, I feel like that bar was absolutely huge. I wonder if my guide is moving. Oh no, it's just the same. I was thinking maybe I haven't tightened it enough. It, is, it actually works, that fireside fragrance works really well in here. Nice, I know it's got a bit of glitter on it, but it's a really nice masculine fragrance and it reminds me of a um, gentleman's Givenchy. A lot of you have probably never heard of that, but it's a popular aftershave from the 80s. Um, I used to absolutely love it. So there we are, it's all cut up now. <laughs>